People of the internet, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another Out of the Park Baseball 17 GM Mode Sim for the Premier League Baseball. I am F5 Penguin and you can find me all over the internet at F5 Penguin. And in the last video, it felt like it was a long time ago and that's because it was. The end of the season was on us, we're in the off season, and uh, some life things got in the way. Not really got in the way, I planned for these. Uh, I was in Dallas for almost a week working with Microsoft uh, on the device group side. I'm currently in a project with them for eight weeks, and I'm also <clears throat> hosting a show on the Xbox Ambassadors channel on Twitch every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern time. So if you go to twitch.tv slash Xbox Ambassadors, you can watch me do a gaming show every single week. I hope to see you there, and, and I apologize for the delay. I'm making it up to you. We're going to do some crazy videos. I got some EASHL beta stuff to do. Uh, you're going to find more than just out-of-the-park baseball here in the next week on this channel. So thank you. And if you've been watching me over on Twitch as well, and I hope that you have on twitch.tv slash F5 Penguin, my channel, because I'm F5 Penguin all over the web, uh, I hope you'll find me there too, streaming some hockey and hopefully some FIFA here in the near future. So that being said, <clears throat> one of the touch base today, we're going to look at two things. I wanted to make these two different videos. They're going to be one video. We're going to be looking at the expansion draft and the expansion teams, of course. And we're going to be looking at the first player draft, uh, the first year player draft. So right now we're in preseason. We're at the end of preseason, getting into opening day. And in the next video, we'll be streaming, uh, not streaming, we'll be doing a video on 10 opening day games. So that's happening. Stay tuned for that. But right now, here's what we did. We had four teams after Jeff cheated his way into winning the title for Premier League Baseball. Uh, we have four teams added to i think we have four teams yeah four teams added to the league okay so we're going to try to even it out to six teams for each division across the board now in the central division here we have the normal corn belters they're they're normal it's kind of adorable too there's their logo um, they're normal okay that, that's where they are and they're just the normal corn belters and then we have in my division and this is i suffered the most out of all this they added two more teams the minnesota north stars Okay, and also the uh, Hillsboro Hops. Hillsboro Hops. I like some of these logos and jerseys. They're kind of cool. And then lastly, in the uh, Southern Division, we added the Los Angeles Monarchs, which I know it's not in the South, but it's in the South of the United States, like the South region of the United States. If you cut the U.S. in half, they would come up in the South. So uh, that's going to be the South division. I hate to be a, a team traveling from Tallahassee to LA uh, every single day or every single week. That'd be kind of crazy. But nevertheless, virtual players have no fatigue for travel. And here we are. Going a step further, we're going to look at something that was amazing for us. I know in the offseason, everyone was saying on Twitter and in the comment section, I appreciate all the feedback, by the way. Hey, you need to get rid of some of these players. And I couldn't. I tried everything I could to bundle and package and move players. But as I showed you before, we were stuck. They did not want overpaid veterans, and people were over their budget, so they had no money. Weren't allowed. The owner would not let them make that trade to get those players. So I couldn't even get, like, you know, trade Cobra at 380 for a guy at 300 or package him and Burleson to get something in less value and kind of fit... I tried for days to make that work before the expansion draft, and I could not. And luckily, we had the expansion draft. It was voted and passed by all of the human GMs. And what that means is they had 20 rounds. All four teams had 20 rounds to pick players that were non-protected. Um, we had the ability to protect up to 20, 20 or 25 players, some number there. Uh, and, the, and the rules were they had to be in the major league or have been in the league for more than uh, four seasons total. Four seasons or in the major league. And since we're a relatively new league, a lot of that wasn't the case in our minor leagues. <clears throat> and we had a lot of players in the major leagues. Um, but I was able to save a lot of them because we had a lot of young talent. We had a lot of call-ups. So we kept almost everybody we wanted. Uh, I did let Fountain go. I, was, I wasn't too big on him. I did unprotect him. Um, but everybody that we unprotected pretty much got picked up by another team. So let's look at that real quick because this was a lifesaver. So 
let's go over to the uh, transaction log and to November, where we see that Fountain got drafted by the Monarchs. Hymas, 500,000, gone to the Monarchs. Cobra, 380, gone to the Corn Belters. Starks was a bust, and I didn't want to have him on the team anymore. He was gone because he was going to cost me too much money next season anyway. To the North Stars. And then Burleson, that was a risk, okay? Burleson was hit and miss. He's fragile. He's average. He's been streaky, but mostly garbage for me overall. Not getting me out of jams, costing me games, blowing wins. I put him up at 650. I figured we could go get $650,000 worth of players. Also, by the way, in this video, we're going to be doing the free agency as well and who we drafted, uh, who we drafted and who we signed. So stay tuned for that. We're going to go through this together. So yeah, we cut $2 million from our budget. So let's go to the front office and look at what we did here. Look at this. Ladies and gentlemen, look at this. We went from being down $1.1 million to projected being up 525000 We cut our budget so well that we're going to be under $2 million in our player expenses for the first time since 50. $1.88 million. So we got some room we have to make. We, we, I don't think we have to sign anybody else, but if we do, we can. We have the ability. We're going to get a half a mil up front uh, at the end of the season, relatively plus or minus about a half mil. That's cool. If we can come out of this season even, we were going to be in good shape. Now, ignore this here and this here for uh, 57, 58, because that's accounting for a million in international amateur FA. Um, we're not going to spend a million. We might spend some money this this season in international FA, but we, we might not. We have to look at what's available, which we'll know in the next video. So, huge boost, right? Huge boost. We are now 22nd in player payroll. We cut the fat. Boys and girls, we cut the fat. I am thrilled. We're not the best team right now, right? So, you know, we're projected to not hit 10,000 season tickets in a capacity of 30K. You know, things are rough. Look at the records, right? We had a one winning record so far. Times are tough. Why not cut contract? Makes sense, right? Our average player salary is underneath the league average. We're in good shape. The only crazy things we have are the our teapot's uh, salary of, I think, 400,000 or something. And Zelaya at 700000 or it could be reversed. It's one of the two. We'll pull that up after we show you this. So I am thrilled of where we sit right now financially. We're going to be back on track. We don't have to wait till next season. We had that happen now. So the 750 k we won from the Premier League Cup last season, plus these player expenditures cut off the team, we are a young team in preparation to be successful for the future. So let's look to the future right now with our player draft heading over. Let's go down the list real quick and what we got going on. We cut contract. We were able to get rid of him. We released Romero from the team. He's currently on the Minnesota North Stars. We cut him. Okay, he was gone. We, I didn't want him anymore. Um, they signed him to a major league contract. Okay, fine. Too much garbage. Uh, then we picked up a right fielder, Mark Porter, in free agency for just a bonus of $8,500. He's in the minor leagues. He's 23. Look at these numbers. Five, six. If we can get that to a five, we're going to be in good shape. Get that to a six, we're going to be in good shape. So we have a talented player who's average in field but can hit, and that's what we wanted, plus power. We're going for power right now. That's what we're aiming for. Okay. Then we went and signed another center fielder, a Josh Farnworth. We had him have good stats. Five, 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 five. Pretty average across the board. Nothing crazy, but a little bit of depth just to kind of round out the uh, the minor leagues. I found some players that had some good ratings, and I went for them. Our scout is highly rated. We're going to be okay. Um, then we went and released Bobby Mercado. He was not working out for us. Look at these numbers. Okay, two pitches, one kind of okay. One great fastball. Everyone should have a great fastball. 26 years old. Couldn't get that movement up. That was what it was. And he leveled out with OSA, which means we don't need him. We don't need him. We're going to be trimming the fat now. We have money to spend. We can trim the fat. We don't have to go with the players we have anymore. We can go. We can get better. So we did that. Then we signed free agent, right uh, relief pitcher, Kevin McDonald, for 100 bucks for the minor leagues. He's 28. I don't know how he was cut from uh, from a AAA team, but we got him. 
And he's a 6'5". Five, five. He is better than the league average in one aspect, and he's got two solid pitches. Uh, his stats are better than what the scouting report says. OSA ranks him a little bit lower. If we go over to his pitching, his FIP is right at the league average. And two years prior, he was under, better than the league average. So I figured, I'll take league average right now in AAA in case somebody gets injured. Before, we had below league average in pitching. I'm working on fixing that. We had money. I didn't even have to pay him that much. So that's good news. We also released John Parham. He leveled out at 28. Didn't get any better with his fastball, his slider. Stuff was a four. It was, it was garbage all around. OSA matched up pretty much across the board. Um, and his pitching, you, you've seen him over the past couple of seasons. He was really good and did not grow. This season, we screwed up. I know that. I know that going into it. We did screw up. He got injured in 53 for the whole season. In 54, he was okay. Pitched 20 innings. 55, he did not pitch enough innings. He really didn't. I have to work on that with my pitchers to make sure they're getting more time, uh, especially with the ones I want to grow. So I screwed him up. Uh, he was never going to be the best thing ever if you go back to scouting from the beginning. But I was expecting something more. We didn't get that. We cut him. Gone. Now we made a big signing in the major league, Eddie Ramirez. This guy is huge. He's out and injured right now. He got injured in preseason. Makes me sad, but I wanted to see how he would do. He's a 5'6", five, 5'5", five, um, five, five, five across the board, right? So average, power grades out as above average, nice swing, okay? That's all good things, but if we look at his batting, this is what I wanted to show you. Um, while we don't have a great result from 50, uh, 55, 54, and 53 were pretty good. And I figured if he's a two-time All-Star and we can get him, which we needed a right fielder anyway, we didn't have any ready to go up to the majors. Chance is kind of borderline, right? Uh, Tamayo's kind of borderline. We didn't really have that player we needed. Um, I want to see how Chance does in AAA before I call him up this season. That's kind of my plan. At $16,000, we got him for three seasons. Now, if we decide to opt in, here's what I did. Okay, I was pretty smart. If he does well for us, we can opt him in. We get to choose, not the player. Everything I signed in the offseason was based on me. My team options. I like this. Team option, 22000 in the 57. If we don't, we pay 1250 Meh. Okay, I can afford that. If he does well for us again, we pay him a little bit more in 58 or not. If I don't have to, if I don't want him, we can cut him for free. We win on this contract. So it's all on his performance. He's a little older. He's a little bit of a veteran, a little bit of a team leader. If he can bring us to a winning record and a good season, I'll keep him. And if not, we have somebody in the wings ready to come up that we can bring up for free. That's a good move. So I'm pretty happy with that signing as well. Then we jump into January and we start at the bottom, okay? Then we went for the big guns, okay? We had to go and get pitchers. We had nobody. We couldn't bring back Graves. We had to let him go. We couldn't bring back Nick Clark. He wanted a million. We had to let him go. And now they're on teams. We couldn't sign them. So we had to go and get people. Look at this guy. Alex Garza. He's not going to wow you. He's not the best player in the world. Above average. Pitching. Above league ag average. 43 innings pitched as a reliever. I like this guy. 50% ground out percentage. I like this guy, okay? This is this is where I want to live. We pull up his basic stats. Not Nothing that's going to wow you. One home run per nine. Hopefully we can get that number down a bit. If I, I'm trying to leverage him the right way. We're paying him $43,000 a year. And here we go again. Let me show you what we're looking at. We got numbers. We're working on it here, okay? I was in contention. And here's the thing. There are two pitchers we signed, this being one of them, where our division rivals, the Queens Bees and the Albany Senators, were gunning for the same player. And we didn't have many options in free agency for pitchers this season, so I had to make do with what we had and sign on who we could sign on. So I did go for a bidding war with a couple of players, and these two pitchers in particular that we'll talk about, this is the first. But I think we did okay. So 56, $43,000. 57, 48. 58, uh, 58 season, we have an option as a team again for 53000 If we don't want it, it's three k to cut him. Fine. In 59, it's 58000 So if he wows us for three seasons, we can opt in again for fifty eight, 
or we pay eighteen fifty to cut him. And if he makes a pitcher's award, we give him twenty five hundred. That's pretty good at a thirty four year old. So we're gonna have him until thirty seven, thirty eight, and hopefully we'll keep him the entire time. Two hundred thousand dollars all in. So I'm pretty happy with signing Alex Garza as a reliever. I'm pretty happy about that. So then we move up the list. We picked up a new catcher. Uh, I did make a couple of cuts. We'll talk about those in a bit. Uh, Jeff Hobson, 100 bucks to sign him. Look at these numbers, 666 across the board. He's already 23, so he's a little bit older. Not a contact hitter, okay? I was aiming for somebody who could play the position well and fill in when we needed to uh, in, the, in the higher leagues when injuries come up and then hopefully in the majors at a later time. I'm going to see if his contact can come up a bit. If not, we paid 100 bucks to have this player. Not going to die to see what he turns into, right? So he was just sitting out there in, uh, in free agency. He's never played. He's never been in the league. He's never, he doesn't have any history on, in college. I took a chance on him. We'll see how he turns out. Then we signed Josh Rawls, shortstop. We were desperate for some shortstops that can also play second base or can also play at other positions. Uh, he can play second base at a six, and I'm probably going to switch him over to second base eventually. Uh, five, four, five, just slightly in a down tick. But again, we have somebody that was sitting in free agency that was kind of getting tossed around, didn't really go anywhere, didn't really do much, played one game in 55. I figured we'd take a shot on him, okay? See what he can do for us. His WRC in 55 with that one game he played was 253, kind of cheating. But he played six games in 54 uh, for the AAA team, did a 153 and 116. So well above league average for hitting, which is something that we lack, hitting and pitching. We kind of were all over the place there and only were good defensively. Had to improve that. Then we signed another shortstop to a major league deal. I know it's his minor league contract, but we called him up. 2500 bucks. Ed Schmidt, look at this guy. He's not going to do anything well for you offensively, but he is a defensive shutdown player. But more importantly, he's a utility player. He plays at league average or excels far better in four positions. Second base, third base, shortstop, center field. It's perfect. It's perfect. This is what we needed, okay? So I got somebody that's going to be up in my major league at 34 years old, expects to be a bench player. Cool. No worries. This guy is perfect for my major league team. He's going to fill in all the holes for when we got to sub out players or when injuries happen or whatever it might be. He can field. He can run. He can steal. He's my go-to. This is my backup player across the board, which allowed us to put an extra pitcher in the bullpen, which is something I wanted to do because we needed pitchers again. So I got him. Pretty happy. We've really revamped this team. So then we're talking this guy. This is the big money right here. This guy, Claude Thierry, got him from Albany. Albany didn't want to re-sign him. Four pitches. One could be a six curveball. Everything else is six, so above league average. His record is not outstanding. Now, I did find out ERA was higher last season. It was a five. That was the average uh, ERA right around five. So he pitched right around league average, pitched a full season. No big deal. Numbers are kind of shaky a little bit, but 2.3 walks per nine is pretty good. Seven strikeouts per nine is pretty good. His war was a one. I liked that. Uh, let's look at his uh, pitching stats real quick. I wanted to show you these. This is what impressed me the most. Um, he sits right at league average, which for me, I've been below league average in everything for five seasons. Okay, I had two good pitchers. Everybody else didn't work out. Give this guy a good defense, put him in a spacious park, he'll put up some respectable numbers. Uh, I am told I, I'm in a pitcher's park with my size. So we'll see how that turns out to be. Uh, how does it work out contractually? Great question. I'm going to go into it right now. So we kind of work out pretty well here. We, we backloaded the second year a bit. He's going to be a starting pitcher. $5,000 if he gets an award. No trade. I can't move him. It's fine because I can get him for two seasons. Seven fifty dollars total deal. 157 and 200. No big deal. Third season, 196 with a buyout of 6,000 if I don't want him. Fourth season, 197. I can cut him for free. So these team options put us in a great position because we can go, hey, this didn't work out. Cut him, get somebody else. We have all the power moving into 1960 across the board. And I'm thrilled about it. 
And with four pitches, he's going to go far. So he's one of our starters, and I am happy that we have him. Uh, now, we did also trade Jeremy Anderson. We got rid of him. Uh, we traded him for a draft pick, and we'll we'll cover that in just a moment. Uh, you can see we, we demoted him and, and uh, moved him around a bit before we traded him. Then we signed right, pi uh, right pitcher. I don't know why I keep saying that. Relief pitcher Chris Glazer to a three-year contract worth 160. Uh, here we got a really high upside for this guy with an interesting combination of pitches, a splitter and a sinker, which I kind of like. At 32, he's a little bit older. He's done respectable numbers in most of his uh, outings with most of his major league teams. So he's one of our starting pitch, uh, relief pitchers in the bullpen in the major league level. Let's look at his contract. Again, we win here all day long. We got him for 45 and 55, and a team option is 60 and 58. No buyout penalty. We can't lose here. We we make out every single time we do this. This is this is perfect for us. So I'm thrilled with these decisions. I really worked hard. Then we released Chris Zapata. He was not going to cut it for us. He's been kind of meh for us. We picked up two good shortstops. Obviously, we're going to have to lose one. So that rounds out January. We move into February. And this is where it gets a little bit crazy. We released Dale Gray. You can see why. Control was going to be a three. OSA kind of agreed. He's now playing for the Albany Senators. It's not going to turn into anything. Um, OSA ranks him at a four with a stuff as an eight. I've held on to him since the beginning. I couldn't get anything out of him. And I was not happy with him. So in 54, he didn't even play. He played two innings because he got injured. Injuries will destroy a player, uh, even though his injury status is okay. It'll just destroy a player. So if I can't get the results I need and my, my accuracy on my scout is higher than almost everybody else's, I'm going to cut him. I can get somebody better. So I did that. Here we go. We traded Jeremy Anderson to the Joplin Blasters for a fifth-round pick. We did that. We released Danny Curtis. You can see why. Nothing spectacular. He kind of floated around for a while, and we had him in Brooklyn. He didn't, he didn't do anything spectacular. He kind of just averaged out. Wasn't really something I wanted to go with. Here are numbers. I looked at this for a long time. I know he did pretty well for us, but he's not been consistent enough. Uh, when given the chance to kind of move up, and we did promote him, you know, in 55, it just, it wasn't, I had other better options. That's what it came down to. I need depth. I need hitting. I need things to work well. Didn't work. We released Justin Callen, same reason. Home run power three, contact four. He leveled out and didn't become anything spectacular. So we made those cuts because we signed better players. Espinosa, same boat. 29 years old. Had him in, tr in double A. We can get somebody better. So we did. He's now playing for the Corn Belters in their, uh, in their minor league. Uh, then we, uh, what did we do here? Then we moved here. Uh, blah, blah, blah. That's signing to the international rosters. Then we went on a release spree because we had to come under contract. We did sign a lot of players, so we did that. Um, we, we released Wyatt Kennett, which was just kind of a, a meh. He's still in free agency. You can see him. He's all over the place. Wasn't going to work out for us because we had to draft better players. We did that. Um, speaking of the draft, I'm trying to find where we had the draft. One second here. There we go. Okay. So Alex Carrillo, same situation. These were all free agency discoveries that I found. Um, I wasn't too worried about any of these players. They weren't spectacular. Uh, OSA wasn't ranking its control above a three. Obviously, that's not going to work out. Uh, Tony Cazares, we released him as well. Same reason, control of two. Can't have any bad pitchers like that. Uh, right fielder Alex Ibarra. Most of these guys were single-A players that we tried. We signed because of injuries. Didn't work. So nothing too uh, too concerning, you know, no no big changes we made. Just cutting some guys that we could replace with better players. And because we were so bad in the draft and we picked up an extra draft pick, or we could, not because we were bad in the draft, but because we were bad in the season, we got good draft position. So uh, same thing here. Alex Martinez, shortstop, 18 years old, didn't work. Su Yu Zhu, same thing. Okay. And we look at, the, we look at uh, OSA and we see that it matches close or isn't going to get much better. We cut. It's just what we're going to do right now. Uh, Santiago Gonzalez, same thing. You know, I got to get some good players that are going to have good potential. And then uh, lastly here, nope, nothing here. And then we jump into, uh, that's February. We jump into March. And let's talk about the releases first. Willie Garcia, third baseman, gone. 
He was good utility, but not good enough. I know he's 18. He could have grown into something. I wanted the draft better, and this was after we drafted some players, so that's what we get. Uh, Jose Perez, same situation. You can see those there. Fast player, but not useful for us. We need hitting. Uh, catcher here, same reason. We had a better catcher. There you go. Josh Farnworth, uh, we did sign him, and then we did release him. So that was a funny thing that happened there. We had average, and then I had a better player. So I'll show you that in just a second. It was kind of a silly decision I made, but I think I, I, I worked out uh, in the long run there. And then we finally released Nieto after having him since 1950 and him not getting any further than double A at any given time. We finally decided to cut him. And I think he's playing for, what's he, who's he playing for now? The hops? Yeah, so he's playing for the hops. Okay, he's fast. That's about it. Power's a two. Eyes a two or a three. Not going to work. So that covers all that. Let's get into the draft, shall we? We shall. First round, pick eight. We had the eighth pick in every round because we had four uh, expansion teams. They had first picks. So we were fourth. We moved to eighth. We aimed for pitchers. I had all my pitchers lined up, but then somewhere in the middle, I added a couple of star players that I thought would we could use for assets or see how they grow. And I'm willing to trade them if I can get value back on the pitching side of things. But I did aim for some specific pitchers, and... They were few and far between, the real raw talent. But if you look here, we started off pretty strong, right? We picked up a player that uh, across the board, everyone tried to go after. We got him. Um, this was my fourth or fifth pick in my list. We got him number one for us. His stuff could be a six, movement five, control seven, four different pitches. Pretty well. Uh, elite starter is what he's rated at. And OSA uh, lost a little bit of faith on him, but still rates him at a six on movement. I might be able to get him up there. We'll see. Then we drafted a left fielder, Lane Plowman, in the second round. Same thing here. Home run power, six. I, seven. I'm going for hitting. It's my aim. No speed, but how, how does he have an eight in stealing and base running if he's no speed? I will never understand that in this game. But nevertheless, ratings. Future bench bat. Some team might give him a bigger shot. Not much potential in contact. If I can get that to a four, but his power and I can get up to a six and a seven... When he makes contact, it's going to be pretty impactful. So I figured I'd give it a shot um, and, and see if I can kind of put him into a pinch hitting position if he grows into anything. He's 18. We'll give it a shot. That was the idea there. Dylan Schneider, another player that I saw as good enough to fill a role. We needed a third baseman that was good. Um, we didn't have any. So this was why I drafted him third round. I lined him up. Uh, OSA ranks him a little bit high in some and a little bit low in others, but his eye, again, if I can get that eye up to a seven, five, five, seven in the majors would be perfect. Would be really perfect. Uh, fourth, Jose Cardoza. This is another guy that I took a chance on and I'm going to see if it goes somewhere. Um, I, I tried to pick up a couple of pitchers because we needed the fill. We needed good pitchers. We needed better than what we had before. And... You know, we're kind of, it's kind of a wait and see right now. Kind of see if they're going to grow into something a little bit more. Uh, first baseman, Jesse Lewis. This guy I liked. Five, six, six across the board. Avoid K's is a little bit low. But if I can get him, like they said here, full season, put up 243, 24, 30 plus power. Yeah. Potentially be a hard out for every time he steps to the plate. Like these are all good things. Uh, CBL did have him at an eight at one point. So, you know, I, I took that into consideration. Figure, let's see what we can get out of him. If he does really well, I'll be pretty happy. Uh, then we got Jody McBride with our other fifth round pick. That's why I got that pick. I knew we could pick up a better player. And it looks like we're going to get somebody like pretty much average. Middle of the ground, right? See what that turns into, into being. Um, we'll see if we can get him in long relief. We have four pitches. One of them, the changeup, we need to grow. If we can grow that, I think we'll be okay. And then sixth round, we got Brendan Martino. As a catcher, that seven ability I really liked. I figured we could give that a shot, and he's got the potential to really be a hitter too. Uh, nothing crazy, but a hitting catcher is always good to have so we don't have two easy back-to-back -back outs with catcher and pitcher in our no DH league. Then we got in the seventh round, Josh Rodriguez, spelled a little bit weird, which threw me off for a bit, and he's, again, average with a little bit plus on the eye. That's what I'm going for, so... 
Uh, things ra- things were not so deep in this draft, but next year's draft is rumored to be pretty deep. And then we got Jordan Zamora, center fielder. He can play lots of positions. I like that. Second base, center field, left field. Get that right field up a little bit. And again here, no power, but we'll see. We'll see. OSA graded them at a five. I didn't know if we'd get close to there. Sometimes they're a little bit uh, more accurate than we are with our scout. Sometimes, not always. And then Dylan Roadcap. This guy's good. I like this guy a lot. This was kind of a sleeper pick I had. Not really good defensively, but his hitting could be really, really good. Most of the tools, big league lineup for several years, 270 hitter, tremendous power potential. I liked that a lot. So if I can get that ball deep, we'll be in good shape. Uh, And then lastly, Jason Nadal, uh, relief pitcher. We picked him up. Wasn't anything crazy. I don't know where it's going to go, but I ran out of picks. I had uh, 51 picks in the list. This was picked by the scout, so I went with it. Now, that brings us out of uh, March here, I believe, right? Yeah, brings us into April, where we picked up one more pitcher, and I was battling this guy for four months. I was in a bidding war with this guy, it felt like, which turned out to actually be three months. But either way, Justin Olsen, look at this. Control is a four, but his numbers don't say that, okay? His numbers say he's pretty good. ERA... Uh, seven games, 48 pitches, 2.05 ERA. Four pitches, one with a changeup that could get a little bit better. He's a starter right now. Scouting report says average number four or five guy, relatively pretty reasonable. Um, pitching stats were what's important here, and a 70. 30% better than average. I was pretty happy with that. So that's what we're looking at. That's what we're looking at. I'm pretty thrilled. Let's look at the contract real quick. I'll show you what we got going on. Three years, 96000 across the board with one option at 96058 So if it doesn't work out for us, cut them again. 5657 we're covered. 58 across the board, that's when we can start getting rid of people again. $1,000 if he gets a pitcher award, he's a starting pitcher. So that's where we sit, ladies and gentlemen. That's where we sit. By the way, Eddie Ramirez is injured for three or four weeks. I talked about that earlier. He was injured in spring training. Makes me sad. Uh, so we had to move some people up. Um, no big deal there. So how does that make our team look? Great question. Let's look at our pitching. This is where we sit in the majors. Thierry, number one. Zamorano, number two. I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about Zamorano, number two. I don't think that's a good decision. I'm probably going to move some people around. Uh, Barnhart three, Conda four, Olsen five. So far in preseason, we were eight and eight with two more games left. I don't know how it's going to shake out, but we shall see. We'll see. Um, Zelaya is our closer. As always, we're paying him, you know, lots of money for that. $550,000 a year for three more seasons. I may move him. I may move him. We'll have to see. Because he's, he's been letting me down a little bit, you know. He's, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I can't get, I might change him to ninth. Like, that might be what I need to do and move him, uh, Hernandez, to seventh. Got Garza as a setup in the sixth. Thierry, that's our guy, right? That's our, that's our stud in the relief position right there. And he's in middle relief, used more often. Glazer as well. I'm thinking about moving Garza. Uh, I was thinking about this. I'm paying him a little bit of money. I might want to get him outside just the setup role, but we'll we'll see how that turns out. Nolan, middle relief. Andres Moreno, avoid high leverage. He didn't work out for us, right? That wasn't uh, anything spectacular. It could have been. Wholly inadequate ability. Mop-up role only. Eh. He was going to be so good and just didn't work out that way. But his contract's only 10K, and we'll lose him in a season or two anyway. Avoid high leverage. Lawson Murphy, emergency starter and long relief guy. I'm pretty confident with my pitching for the major league. I think I did pretty well. Let me know what you think in the comment, by the way. Like and subscribe to the video. Leave your comments. I love your feedback. I keep watching it all the time. Our lineups. This is what we're looking at here. Oh, Seal was injured too? Jesus. Oh, six days. No big deal. Okay, so we got, we called up Rabe and Pablos. I know our catchers are playing catcher roulette, picking somebody that can work for us. So we're going to go with that and see what happens. I like the the stats on Rabe, 7-6. He's got a four, four, five with gap power six. I feel like that's pretty good. That should shore up the, the catching position. 
Then we got Kirshner and Godwin. Godwin's going to be our, you know, our saint across the board. Uh, Siula starting, as most people wanted him to start. I got him up there. Philpot, of course, we got Teapot up there. We got him for another uh, two seasons with an opt-out and then 750. So at 58, we're going to be hitting the reset button across the board and have to have that filler. Uh, may re-sign him. We'll, we'll see how that turns out. He's 33. We got time. Capra, he's moving out to left field. I like him out at left field. I think if we can get that to a 7, he'll grow. Um, his home run power can get to a 5. That, that kind of fell off just a touch here, if you see that here. Uh, from January to May because of his injuries. It just kind of put him on the back burner a touch. But I can get that back up to a five. We'll be in good shape. This is our future star. This is Brian Capra. I'm happy about him. Dave Punkachar, punch a car. Uh, he was suspended for a couple of days. Actually, he was injured for a couple of days for uh, getting into a domestic dispute with his girlfriend. Was out for a week with a broken hand. He says he punched a wall. We'll see if that's true. Either way, he's up here. Okay, we like him. He's good. He was a surprise. He was only supposed to be a filler role. He turned out to be a starting position. He should. This was a sleeper. We got him in the eighth round in 1952, and we grew him nicely. Look at this. 53, we had him in both uh, double, uh, single and double. Then we had to call him up in 54 because of injury. And in 55, he did so well for us, I kept him up there until he got injured. Injuries, right? That's, that's always what kills us. Fragile. So we have Capper to move over in case we need to, and that's what we'll do. And then in right field, we moved up Jason Chance to replace uh, Ramirez with Tamayo backing all three of those positions up. I like Tamayo. Okay, his numbers can get better. He's hitting 250 in the in the AAA. I put him in this position. He can play. He'll grow. I think he might get a little bit better, and we're going to see if he will. Um, and then lastly, of course, we have Schmidt being. Uh, Defensive sub across the board here for second base. And then we're going to move that out to uh, shortstop and other other positions as well. So um, I wanted Zarnecki to get all the touches in. Sorry, got a message there. Um, get all the touches in spring training. So I'll move Schmidt out to uh, that position here shortly. Um, yeah, so that's what we're looking at there. And then... I mean, you guys don't – I don't think the concern is worrying about where we sit here. We know where we sit in the AAA. All the guys that we've been calling up back and forth in the starters uh, for pitchers. We got Nieves still there as a closer. Sarah Pigley on grass check. Vital McCarty uh, McKinley. Moved up Josh Rawls. I'm just kind of pointing out what we looked at. Moved up Gutierrez. We, we just blew past AA for him because I think we, he will do well uh, at the uh, center field position with Perdomo. And then we got Trangies up. Sayaz moved up, Estrada moved up, Hop moved up, uh, Harris moved up. Uh, Fristo went back to closer. I like that better. I got three catchers in in Double A. I'm okay with that. Seeing who grows and we'll cut who doesn't. Schneider, we called him up from the draft. Uh, Askey, Brady, and Mores. We're kind of splitting them out a little bit, but we're gonna see if Askey can get better. He did not do well for us in the majors. Um. I thought he would do really well for us after having him a couple of times up there. It just didn't pan out. Farrell, too. That didn't pan out for us. So I'm, I'm kind of worried. But I got Zarnecki. I picked up a good draft pick last season. So first round draft pick, first pick. He's he's our other star. Like, we're, we're ready. We're a dynasty for the future. 7-5-5. Five, five. And with a gap power of 6, avoid Ks. He's not striking out. Right? He's not striking out. Um, and then we got Pinsent, Aguilar, and Mark Porter. And then all of our new guys are down here, okay? I think the only people that we kept down here, yeah. So St. Germain, Powell, right? Briones, we signed him kind of uh, right before. Yeah, we signed him as a scouting discovery. We got him over. Uh, who else was not coming? Oh, Thierrin we kept too because we had to split out Ohala and Vital. I wanted to get all those guys starting time, so they have it. And then there, he's splitting time vaguely, very, very briefly with Lewis and a defensive sub. Uh, then we got Hobson and Martino. So that rounds out our team. We got 19 players in the international complex. I'm going to let that grow to 30 and then make a couple of cuts to keep that open and rolling in case we get injuries. But I think our depth is good enough that I'm not going to worry about injuries this season. I'm not going to worry about calling people up from the international complex for, for the fill for single A. I'd rather let that run a little bit thin and fill the gaps and then call them back down so we don't have to cut players as we go this season. We did that last season. Didn't really work for us. So... In the next video, I know this one was long. I apologize for you watching uh, this long if it was boring, but I hope you enjoyed this. I am ready for the season. I'm ready. 
I dropped our ticket prices back to 149. We're just above uh, the top with that. I'm hoping that this grows very well. Um, we'll see. We start winning, we're gonna get people to show up. And that's all we need. So in the next video, opening day, uh, 10 games. I think we are maybe 15, depends on who's simming and when. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna be doing opening day. We're gonna be seeing how our team did and we'll see if we have to make any changes. If you will, go to the website, look at the description in the link below, uh, link in the description below. You can see the link to the Premier League Baseball website. All of the stats, news, topics, all that good stuff is on there. Give me your feedback. Do you like it? Do you hate it? I feel we're in a great position. I hope you agree. I'm F5 Penguin. You can find me all over the web at F5 Penguin. Please, again, like and subscribe. And, of course, I will see you all in the next video. Stay tuned. I'm proud. I'm proud. I'm patting myself on the back right now. Do you hear that? That's me patting myself on the back. I did a good job. I did. It's a lot of thinking.